How many wish you had him when you was younger? Jesus. I got him at 18, but I wish he would have came at one. <laughs> Prophesying, baby. Oh, go, 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 baby, 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 baby. How many know we wouldn't have made all the mistakes? We made? But your mistakes make you better. Come on, hallelujah. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you what? All things. Hold up. The Holy Ghost does what? So that means we're supposed to be listening to him. How many ever told, heard the Holy Spirit tell you, don't do that? How many ever heard the Holy Spirit say, don't go that way? I don't be playing. But one day I was going into this store. I said, I'm going to try this store. I've drove past this for many years. I'm about to go in this store. And I was by myself and I got out the car and the Holy Spirit said, get back in the car. Don't you dare go in that store. Now, I'm like, well, but I didn't see nobody moving or nothing. How many know I don't know what was going on in there? Okay. Somebody said, what you do? Got back in the car and drove off. <laughs> and every time I drive past that store, I look at it like this. I don't know why he told me not to go in that store. It was a poultry store when I was eating meat. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to get in there and try to get one of them turkeys they was talking about. But I might have became a turkey or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They might have been serving human meat. I don't know. But the Holy Spirit, and it was strong. It was strong. Like, get yourself back in your car and keep it moving. Go to the regular grocery store like everybody else. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I was obedient. But think of the many times we weren't obedient to the Holy Spirit. Did it cost you? Say it loud. Did it cost you? Give praise to God that you learned a lesson. Come on. Somebody say disobedience costs too much. Hallelujah. So it said he shall teach you all things. Somebody say Holy Spirit teach me all things. Then it says that he brings all things to your what? Remembrance. Now I'm not talking about y'all that live in nostalgia all the time. People that live in nostalgia, I was reading about that today. You can't move forward in your future. Your future not happening because you're so busy in your past. I remember when I had on. Anybody remember Root Sidewinders? Anybody in here remember Root Sidewinders? Nobody? Oh, dang. Y'all didn't wear fashionable shoes back in the day? All right. I had some Root Sidewinders. We went past Roots down, uh, downtown Birmingham the other day. And I remember my pair of Roots. They were, they fastened on the side. They looked like boots. Y'all couldn't tell us nothing. What? Huh? I had navy blue with gray heel. What you say? You couldn't tell me nothing. But I can't sit up and think about that all the time when I'm out buying boots. I remember when I had Sidewinders. What is, where is up in here? That was in 1980. Okay. Okay, I believe God, Charles, for them. I saved up, had somebody take me there, had to pay gas fare, and got there and got you couldn't tell me none. But I can't live on that. I can't keep going back. I remember when I wore sidewinders. I remember when I wore sidewinders. I remember when I wore sidewinders. Anybody know me? I don't let you keep going back to the past. Because God is not in your past. He's in your future. But say, he ain't in my past. He in my future. Look at your neighbor and say, stop talking about it all the time. You can find people and that's all they want to talk about. God is saying, what you want to do now? I saw a picture. How many seen the picture with uh, Diana Ross lately? Oh, my God. She looked younger than most of the people in this room. She's on there. She got her natural hair. She's on there smiling. Then they had Carol Brunette on there. And they still doing stuff. They, they had two icons on there. And they say they are still doing stuff. They said they're not stuck in where they were. They're not stuck on what they did. They're not trying to be who they were or what they did in their past. They're on the future. And they start naming all the stuff they doing now. I think she like 80. I know Karen that's in her 80. 80? She don't have no wrinkles. And it ain't all hard. She ain't got no lip, you know, Botox and all that. It ain't there. Just beautiful. They call them icons. 
I said, yes, ma'am. I said, oh, yeah. Focusing on their future, not looking backwards. I think that's what's keeping them young. I think when we become nostalgic and don't listen to the Holy Spirit who is in our future, we start getting all that gray and stuff because that's not where you're supposed to be. I believe parts of us start to die when we go backwards. When we not look into the future, if the past already happened, there's no life there. What I did in high school, that's why I don't like reunions. I don't go. Y'all can go do them. They, they be getting mad at me. And I told them y'all be having them at the club anyway, so that's not happening. I'm not taking my Holy Ghost to the club. Oh, she just stuck up and saved. Yep. And when you need me, I'll be here. I don't compromise my Holy Spirit for some nostalgia. Some of y'all, ooh, I just can't wait to get back. Girl, <laughs> I'm so busy praying for my future. I'm so focused on where I'm going, who I'm supposed to be, where I'm going, how I'm going to get there. God, I need to know. How, what did I sow that seed for? What did I just intercede for? I'm in my future. I ain't got time for the past. Got time for that. Pastor Jay, every year they come and ask me and hunt me, and every year I go back and forth. Eh, eh, where y'all having it at? Huh? You got you got that new picture of her? Bam. Oh, <laughs> Focusing on your future. She ain't stuck. Then they start naming all the stuff they doing. It was sick. Thank you. That's sick, ain't it? So when people are crippled up and stuff, that's saying that you doing something wrong. And then you got the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. Who's connected to God? Who's all power? <laughs> we got to start doing some exploits up in here. Don't come telling me what you have. Pastor, I used to have this ice cream shop. And the ice cream shop. I used to have a hundred different flavors. When was that? 1968? God is in your future, not in your past. Come on, get back to that scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doesn't she look iconic? That's what I'm talking about. See, I told my sons, I said, I'm going to be a hundred years old wearing red bottoms, walking real fast. Y'all going to have to keep up with mama. And I told Isaiah, I said, I'm going to be that mama in the back. Yeah, yeah, take mama to the stuff. Tell your wife, I want the fancy car. I don't want that old. Don't, don't put me in that children car. I want to give me the Aston Martin. Hey, Amen. Right. Because you're as old as you think you are. People in my family live to be 100, and I believe it's because we focus on future. We focus on our future. When we sit down, they don't go nostalgia and all of that stuff like that. They're future people, unless they want to. Now, my grandfather was the only one I know that said, I'm tired, baby, I'm leaving. We like, can you just do that? Yeah, he did. He told everybody he loved them. He asked for forgiveness from those that needed forgiveness. And he said, the Holy Spirit's coming to take me soon. My parents say the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden they was in there singing. And they said, the Holy, they said, wind came in. Everything started moving. The wind came in. They said, it went. And they said, he went. Come on. Hallelujah. We wasn't crying. They was in there shouting. They say we was conflicted. Do we shout that daddy dead? <laughs> but the Holy Ghost was just in here. We just felt the Holy Ghost. We felt the Holy Ghost. You have choices. My God. Somebody said, ooh, I'm talking about you having a good relationship with God. I'm talking about you being tied with the Holy Spirit that lives within you. You ain't got to just be dying. All oh, easy. I told you, speak to your body. Sometimes you got to speak to that body. Stuff go to hurt and they say, okay, this is stupid. I ain't had enough of this. How many know it starts straightening up, don't it? Yeah, like, we're not doing this. Not going out like that. Some people like it. But you start praying in the Holy Spirit, God say, look here, Jesus died so that you could be free. Now, if you want healing, I am part of healing. I got the healing connection. Come on. I'm hooked up with a healer. Amen. So you got to go in the spirit and start speaking healing. Not that negativity. Oh my. Uh, oh my. Uh. 
Oh my, eh. how many know when you say it, you welcome it? And it get, how many ever notice once they diagnose people, it get worse? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And when the doctor tell me something, he walk out, I be like, nah, I bind that in the name of Jesus. I bind the Holy Spirit, raise up and be in charge. God, you are my healer. You are my source and my redeemer. I bind it in the name of Jesus. With and by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed and made whole. Going out like that. But you got to know how to pray. What you fighting? What you fighting? God can give any miracle. Holy Ghost inside you. Come on. Hallelujah. All right, Jeremiah, did we finish? Nope. And we'll bring things to your remembrance. Somebody say good things. So when it's negative, it's not Holy Spirit. How many got that? Holy Spirit don't have you laying up in the bed talking about what you got did, what you lost. Amen. I remember him. I remember how he smelt it. I remember. I know it smell, but I remember. Mama, he's been dead 20 years. You got to let go. Holy Spirit, bring good things to your remembrance. I said, whatsoever I have what? Said unto you. Now give me Galatians 5, verse 6. It says, how are we led by the Holy Spirit? How many want to be led by the Holy Spirit? Man, if we led by the Holy Spirit, don't you know you'll pull up with the right person? You bring the right person into your life. Now, I'm not saying perfect because there's no perfect human. There's no perfect human in the earth. How many know that? I can get another you in a minute. The devil is a lie. No, you can't. If the Holy, if God sent you somebody, he sent you somebody. But now, here's the thing. Did God send them? He got quiet in the house. Did God send them? I said, did God send them? Did God send this into your life? Or did you want it? How many know you can want something so bad and it open up for you? You got to watch what you open that spirit up to. You can bring stuff into your life. It's called the power of wish. You can wish something into your life, can't you? And it come and you think you want it. Boy, by the time it whoop you up and down, you'll be like, what did I do? <laughs> you didn't got beat up, beat down, up, down, around in the hospital. You like, what did I wish upon? And you laying there in the Holy Spirit to say something like this. You never asked me. You never asked me. How many of you heard him talk to you like that? You never asked me. I'd be like, oh, snap, crackle, pop. That's why in my more mature state, I have learned to ask God more. I don't bust moves like I used to. I'm not nostalgic about a lot of stuff. It happened, it happened, it's over, it's done. What you got next? You ready? So we're talking about how we are led by the Holy Spirit. Galatians, ooh, it's, that's a long one, five through six. I think, uh, let's save that one. I'm gonna come back to that one because I wanna do something else, okay? So join me with John 15, 26. So I say, St. John 15, 26. Amen. This is Bible study. Amen. I say, I'm going higher in the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm making you more aware of him. I'm making you more aware of the Holy Spirit. I mean, know he with you everywhere you go. Sometimes I think he wish he wasn't. Amen. Some of the stuff he got to hear and go through. Especially you phone watchers. Can you imagine the Holy Spirit while you sitting on the phone? Not asking me nothing. Not praying about nothing. Sitting here being entertained by 30 videos. What is your Holy Ghost doing while you doing that? What your angels doing while you doing that? Somebody tell them what they doing. This Bible study. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I take all of them. Amen. What they doing? They looking for those that seeketh God. They're looking for those that's asking God, change my way. Can you imagine if all the time we spent socially that we put into our prayer life, where would you be? 
It used to be a song my grandmama and they used to sing at the Baptist church. Where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me, where would I be? Remember that? Where would I be? Then they say, he kept my enemies away. Come on. You, you, you got to get back to that. It's not called to save. It's called saved. <laughs> How many need him in the morning? How many need him in the noonday? How many need him in the evening? Well, stop quitting God. Stop turning them off. Remember in one of them Medea movies, she take and turn his hearing aid off. That wasn't Medea. That was the other movie where she was sitting, turn his hearing aid, her husband hearing aid down when she didn't want him to hear nothing. You can't do that to the Holy Spirit. He still hear you. Was that the crumps? Yeah, the crumps, I think it was. She would always turn his hearing aid down when she didn't want him to hear. That's not right. You can't turn the hearing aid on Holy Ghost down. But we can disappoint him. The Holy Spirit is a person. He has feelings. Did y'all know that? Holy Spirit is a person. He has feelings. Can you imagine how he feels sometimes, the way we treat him? I'm apologizing all the time. Because I need heaven open for me 24-7. I say, I need this. And we clap, we, we shout, we put our faces on the floor, we wave. But when we go home, we become another person. Who are you? How many faces you got? I, I need a fan that got all my faces. My church face. My work face. My face in front of my pastor. My face when I had my own. My face, my club face. <laughs> my flirtation face. I don't know how to flirt. I, I flirt with him. And that's it. It's been 30 years. I, I ain't got to do that. I'm, that chapter in my life closed. I thank God. Hey, everybody married and glad. Will you clap? I mean, I'm praying for the singles, but oh my God. To start that again. Somebody say, ain't nobody yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, go back. <laughs> Did I give you another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when the comforters come, whom I will send, who's sending it? Okay. Whom I will send unto who? You from what? The Father. This is Jesus speaking, of course. Okay. But when the comforter, somebody say, my comforter, is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of what? That's why you can't be a bona fide liar. And then people that lie hate people that lie. Oh, I've been living a long time. I have seen this. I have seen this. I have been around liars that hate liars. I'm like, the Bible says it's like a man that sees himself in the mirror, walks away and forget what manner of man he you are or woman. Amen. Somebody say, be honest. Just touch my real soul. Be honest. Even when it hurts, just be honest. I didn't say be brutal. Because it's a difference. I'm just being real. I'm keeping it real. Then you got to go repent. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. And the Holy Spirit have you say stuff right. The Holy Spirit have you think about it first. That's why when I see people that are going off and stuff, I say, see, you ain't prayed about how you saying that at all. You just going off. You got to pray about it. How many of you ever had to tell somebody something big and you didn't really want to? You had to pray about how I was going to say this, how I'm going to say this. I don't, phew. Whoa, God help. I, don't, I got to go here. And the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom. Come on, thank you, G. We talking about the Holy Ghost today, because some people don't know. Some of you know, but a lot of people don't know. It's the Holy Spirit, ladies, that help you speak better to your husband. Give you smart. Say, don't talk about that right now. You had a bad day at work. Just hold it for tomorrow. Same thing for the ladies. Just because she's at home don't mean she's your dumping ground. A to the man. We have to be cordial one to another. The Holy Spirit is always a gentleman. 
always gentle, always kind. So when somebody brutal, that's not Holy Spirit. Going off, that's not Holy Spirit. He's always in control. Temperance lives in Holy Spirit. How many getting something today? Even the spirit of truth. Somebody say, live in the spirit of truth. And that's in everything. When we teach truth, y'all got to say, ouch and amen. I said, when we teach truth, we, you got to say, ouch and amen. Sometimes you want to know what I get a lot, especially from the same people. How many want to know what I get? Or they stop looking at me. They do. When I be teaching and I hit truth. They... Serious, same people. Same people do the same thing. All the time, I'm trying to tell you, I've been passing a long time. Right in this room, right now. As soon as I say something I want to hear. Or they, just, they try to act like I'm not teaching up here and try looking at the blinds. I've been doing it a long time. I might say, but God, y'all see it don't stop nothing. Because <laughs> you need what's being taught from this pulpit. Whether it's pastor or me, you need it. You need it. That's why you keep coming back because you know the spirit on the inside, the Holy Ghost on the inside of you tells you what you need. Even we don't want to hear it sometimes. We like, see, I, I needed it. How many of you used to remember your mom used to give that nasty medicine, especially back in the 80s? It was the nastiest medicine on the market. I promise you, they didn't have no flavor in it. They gave you roots. And then tell it ain't that bad, mama. I just lost my tonsils. <laughs> okay. But we took it, didn't we? Did we get better? Let's thank God for the mamas with the nasty medicine. Sometimes you got to take stuff you don't want. You think you know what's best, but the Holy Ghost know that at the end of that rope is death. At the end of that rope is something you don't need. Holy Ghost knows that. How many know that? So when stuff falls in my family, my children's lives, I always tell them, must be the Holy Spirit. I always tell them. I say, must not. If, if a relationship didn't work when they were dating or something like that, I'd be like, must be God. I say, thank God we didn't have a wedding first. Come on. Drop them like it's hot. I taught my children, drop them like it's hot. I taught Jazz, drop them. Jazz used to drop them so hot, we didn't even know they was gone. It was before she was married. She, she was dating in high school. She had a little man and he, he little boy. And he, we thought he was nice and, you know, and he come over a few times. Next thing I know, we, we ain't seen him. He ain't called no more. We ain't. This ain't how. I said, Jazz, what happened? Oh, mama, I dumped him two weeks ago. Praise God. What happened to him? Oh, mom, she gone. I'm like, okay. Because they know God is their source. They know how to take that pain to God. Or they know how to see and say, now I got to make a choice. And I'm not going to lose my relationship with God for you. You won't line up and act right. You got to go. Some of y'all act like y'all just can't. I, I just, nah, I don't want to be alone. <laughs> How's that working for you? How is that working for you? Love don't post to hurt like that. I just skipped over some heads and spoke some truth. You ain't supposed to be crying all the time. You ain't supposed to be bruised up going to the hospital all the time. I said it. Hiding bruises, coming in here looking like a star. You ain't no movie star. Sit on down. Take them glasses off. We used to have a guy come in here. He saved now. He used to come in here with shades like he was a celebrity. He ain't here right now. I ain't gonna be looking at him because he got healed, set free, and delivered. <laughs> I said, why you got them shades on in God's house? All the time. He said, what? I said, why you got them shades on? In the house of Jesus. Take them off. He's looking at me like, who is this lady? <laughs> Telling me the Holy Ghost will give you boldness. But now he got the Holy Ghost. He's saved and got some sense. He a whole 100% turn around. Let's give God praise. Walking in here with sunglasses at nighttime. They could have said them club glasses. <laughs> See, without the Holy Ghost, how many know you foolish? You walking around the club with glasses on at night, coming in. 
It's already dark. <laughs> you, got, you got on sunglasses and dancing. Can't even see the dance floor. You know not to go too far because you, you know, you can't see. That's foolishness. Just foolish. Without the Holy Spirit, we do foolish stuff. I used to dance in front of the speaker when I wasn't saved. Just dance in front of the speaker all the time. It's like it wasn't that. Then go home and you want your ears ringing. Holy Spirit said, if you don't stop, you're going to lose your hearing. <laughs> I didn't even know the voice of God. God started speaking to me before I got totally saved. He was wooing me. He was wooing me. But I'm going to be honest with you. I've always had a love and respect for God. This always did. I believe my parents, they used to go to church all the time. My grandparents, not my parents, my grandparents, they went to church. I used to love going to church with them. I go to the club, come home and pray. That's how he started pulling me. Like, let me save her at 18 because she going to mess up if I don't. I graduated one week, got the Holy Spirit the next. Come on, come on, somebody. He got me real young. That's why I still look 29. <laughs> Ain't trying to be like Diana Ross at 80, looking like this. Like, yeah. With my red bottoms on and the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I ain't going out like that. Some of y'all embrace that old stuff. I don't have time for that. I ain't going out like that. Well, I'm an old man. <laughs> okay. You're going to get all the benefits of old. The Bible never said embrace it. Never even said embrace it. Amen. How you going to raise your children? How you going to hold your grandbabies? Mama, oh, now nah, I can't see the devil's a liar. No. I got life to live. I got a lot of things I ain't seen yet. How many want to see some stuff? I want the Holy Spirit in me to go stand in the middle of Greenland and just look at the mountains and stuff and say, good goobity goo, God, you created all this. Then I'm going to go to Iceland and say, good goobity goo, what you doing here? Look at that. I got things to see. Come on, come on. It's too much world. You got to broaden your mind. Do like this. Somebody say, broaden my mind, Holy Spirit. Okay? Then it says, uh, the spirit of truth, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the Holy Spirit always pushes you back to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is always pushing you back to God. Get back to God. That was sometime when y'all backslide, y'all be missing and stuff, and y'all come back. Why? Because that Holy Spirit was still in there saying, get back to God. Get back to me. Holy Spirit giving you dreams. How many of you ever had that? Get back. Dreams. You dreaming? Just dreaming stuff? I'm not going back. I'm not going because you want to do it and do everything you want to do. But God is speaking on the inside. I love you. I'll never leave you. I'm not going to stop loving you. Don't you thank God for a great love like the Holy Spirit? Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, he never gave up on me. Never gave up on me. There are many scriptures that demonstrate how the Holy Spirit is God. He is not a spiritual expression of Jesus or less divine version of God, but equal part of the Trinity. So each one of them hold an equal part of the Trinity. Each one of them has a function. Amen. And you have to know their diverse function. Just like when you pray, you got to end it with in the name of. I can't have nothing unless I say in the name of. So I got to come through who? To get a blessing. I can't just sit up here and quote scripture and don't say, Father God, in the name of. And I, what, what, what I'm supposed to do? Skip past him? He died on Calvary, took 39 strikes for you, and they pulled skin off of him. Revealed his ribs. Come on now. Put a thorn, put thorns around his head. Nails in his arms and his feet. Died on Calvary like a sinner who knew no sin. Pierced him in his side and water rushed out. Did all that for us. We act like nothing has happened. We act like we don't have any responsibility to God. It's time to get back to the Holy Spirit. I got a responsibility. I got to see. I want y'all to know why you say. I want you to know why you love God. Because this matter, your foundation matters. I've been saved since 1985. Straight, no chaser, never left God. To God be the glory. Because they gave me a tight foundation. 
That's why they sing, Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, what? I've never been more glad, cause I put my faith in Jesus. Cause what? He's never let me down. Faithful through the generations. What? So why would he fail now? What? He won't. <laughs> He's always on the inside stirring you. Sometimes you want to be mad and sad, but you feel that Holy Spirit on you. Say, get up. I got something else for you. Don't you dare lay here lest you die. You ain't dying today. You gonna get up. My power lives in you. Just pray. Go in the spirit. Go in the spirit. I got something for you. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Leave God. Come on, give God praise.